Hi there and welcome to Saltwire Today for Wednesday, March 1st. I'm Scott Squires, in for Kate Walker. Weather is once again top of mind as we start a new month. Weather specialist Alistair Alders has some details on what's headed our way. Alistair, is March coming in like a lamb or a lion? Well, Scott, I think you could argue that it's a bit of both, really. I mean, we did have the snow around this morning that impacted the commute, but it wasn't a significant snowfall. So maybe a bit of a quiet line, but certainly the weather uh, later tomorrow and into early Friday, more line like we have a significant snowfall on the way for parts of Nova Scotia. And we can take a look at that on the weather timeline. And the low pressure system will be moving off of Cape Cod Thursday afternoon and snow develops ahead of it in the southwest corner of Nova Scotia early Thursday afternoon. It reaches the Halifax area late afternoon into the evening hours Thursday, eastern mainland Nova Scotia through Thursday evening and then into Cape Breton near and after midnight. Now take note on your timeline that in the southwest corner of Nova Scotia the snow is forecast to mix or change to some rain and we could see a bit of mixing as well in the Halifax area especially along the Atlantic coast mixing with rain or ice pellets because temperatures will initially be starting off mild but will be dropping Thursday night into Friday. Any areas that do see the changeover or mixing will change back to some snow through Thursday night and the system relatively fast moving it's out of here uh, as we go into and through Friday morning now in terms of snowfall amounts much of mainland Nova Scotia set for 10 to 20 centimeters of snow however there could be pockets of 20 to 30 centimeters over central Nova Scotia and that does include the Halifax area into parts of the valley so take note of that especially if you are commuting tomorrow night into early Friday now in Cape Breton amounts will be lower a general 5 to 10, maybe 15 centimeters for southern parts of Cape Breton, and then northern Cape Breton, 5 centimeters or less. And in the southwest corner of Nova Scotia, 5 to 10 centimeters, except less than 5 directly along parts of the coast, because that's where we will be seeing more of mixing with ice pellets and that rain. So certainly as we go through Thursday night into Friday, travel will become tricky across much of Nova Scotia, much of the Maritimes. So if you do have to be out on the roads, do take care. And of course, keeping a very close eye on this all with updates on the weather section of saltwire.com. And of course, another update here tomorrow. And I'll have your Halifax forecast coming up in just a bit. Scott. Nova Scotia has joined the list of governments banning the social media app TikTok from government-issued devices. The ban takes effect today, following the lead of the federal government, who announced their ban on Monday, citing concerns about the Chinese-owned app's connection to Beijing and the privacy and security risks posed by the app. Colton LeBlanc, Minister of Service Nova Scotia and Internal Services, said in a statement that, quote, there is no need for the TikTok app to be on government-issued mobile devices, end quote and that will be blocked from being accessed to protect the privacy and security of government information. The statement added that the app's data collection methods provide substantial access to the contents of a mobile device, making users vulnerable to surveillance. The ban applies to all government departments and agencies, including Nova Scotia Health. Halifax Regional Municipality is also considering a similar move and is currently reviewing the concerns and considerations raised by the federal government. The Quebec government and the European Union have also imposed similar bans, with the United States government banning the app in December. You can find more on this story at saltwire.com. Fuel prices continue to fluctuate in our region, and energy insider Dan McTagg is here to share his best estimate on where prices are headed. It looks like you're, well, we'll have to wait and see what the Energy Information Agency says about uh, gasoline inventories, but at this point it looks like about a penny. Uh, savings for gasoline as well, and diesel likely to go up about uh, two and a half cents a liter. So uh, almost uh, mirroring what's happening, uh, what will take place uh, Thursday, uh, tomorrow for Newfoundland, uh, we're going to pretty much see the same thing across Atlantic Canada. And that, you know, that isn't a great number, uh, considering where we've been over the past year, uh, the numbers are, uh, are pretty stable. We see, sort of see this lateral move right now, as markets are uh, pretty panicky over the U.S. Fed. For my full conversation with Dan, search up Prices at the Pumps on saltwire.com and YouTube. We head to Yarmouth now, where a unique after-school program is bringing together young people and celebrity chefs to teach them the art of cooking. Tina Camo has more. Yeah, what are we putting here in the bowl? Onions. Onions. Beef. Noodles. Green onions. Garlic. 
An after-school boys cooking club in Yarmouth has proven to be a recipe for success. The three-month cooking program is offered through a partnership between Yarmouth Recreation and the Yarmouth Rotary Club. Each week, the boys have been gathering to learn about cooking and to tackle recipes. In addition to Yarmouth Recreation staff and Rotary Club volunteers, to help the boys out on this front, celebrity chefs have been invited into the program as well. During a recent after-school session, Sonia Park Lawrence, who with her husband Troy, owns and operates the popular Honey Bees restaurant in Yarmouth, came in to teach the boys about how to cook dumplings that are part of her Korean culture and heritage. She was also joined by Alyssa LeBlanc Mood of Yarmouth County, who was a contestant on season six of MasterChef Canada. As has always been the case each week, there was lots of enthusiasm as the cooking and learning was underway. It's my first time teaching, but it's all about fun, right? So I, I, I just want everybody to have enjoyed and have fun. How are they doing? They are very good, and I, they look at them. <laughs> they love it. And they're it. making dumplings. How they're, did you decide on the recipe? So re the recipes come from my traditional Korean dumplings that we do every year, and then New Year's New Year's Day, and then we make every year. So we used to do that all the time, and the whole family make it. So this is really fun for everybody. How have you been enjoying this program? Uh, it's fun. You do it every week. It's not like every day and then it gets old. It's every week. You cook a bunch of different stuff, so it's entertaining. Are you guys anxious to try these? Yeah, quite. <laughs> Rotary Club volunteer Carrie Muse says the cooking program has been a highlight for her each week. And Matthew Smith with Yarmouth Recreation says after the program wraps up with the boys, they'll be looking to do another one with the girls. They also hope to bring the after school cooking program back again next year since it's proven to be a delicious success. This is Tina Camo reporting for Saltwater Network in Yarmouth. Time now for today's Thinking Out Loud with Sheldon McLeod. Today, Sheldon speaks with the president of the Fire Services Association of Nova Scotia. Chief Greg Jones explains what the priorities are for the thousands of firefighters he represents. The issue of mental health, that's one that's evolving as well. And I'm curious, I know you were asked if you could, if you had a magic wand, the three things that you would want. And uh, one of those, those things you said was mental health. That was the first thing you said, mental health and uh, obviously cancer, presumptive cancer coverage. So, so what can you say to that for us? Yeah, so for me, uh, for me and, and most members in the fire service, uh, mental health, cancer coverage, they're very top of mind for us. Um, you know, I started in the fire service at a point in time where uh, we kind of hid that stuff away. We didn't look at the big picture. Uh, it's very important that we not only look at the big picture now and us as current members, we take care of ourselves, but also for new members joining the fire service, uh, we need to have a plan. We need to be proactive. Uh, when individuals first join, we need to be up front. We need to, to have that, uh, that conversation that started out right from square one. Uh, but mental health for me and cancer coverage, is, it's been very important. Uh, and a couple other things that have come out of that uh, that's even more important or, or just as important to that is operational dispatch in our province and also the importance around the governance. To watch Sheldon's full interview, click on the opinion section at saltwire.com. And while you're there, click the podcast link for Sheldon's podcasts. Saltwire is a proud sponsor of the 2023 Prince Edward Island Canada Games. And on today's Atlantic Sportswire, Jason Simmons takes us inside the ring. Although the results may not have been what they wanted, Nova Scotia boxing coach Brad Ross liked what he saw from his athletes at the 2023 Canada Winter Games in Prince Edward Island on February 28th. I thought that all of our boxers performed very well. Uh, we didn't get the nod in a couple of the decisions that were very close. Uh, we had... Uh, out of the five fighters, we lost three split decisions. So um, all our fighters fought really well. Uh, they left everything in the ring. Nova Scotia Sierra Issues a day was part of history, fighting in the first ever female boxing match at a Canada Games. Issues a day lost a split decision to Tessa Scott of New Brunswick in the flyweight 52 kg class. Nova Scotia's Noah Thompson, featherweight 57 kg, and Julian Wilson, light welterweight 63.5 kg, also lost split decisions, while Ian McLeod, light heavyweight 80 kg, dropped a unanimous decision. 
Despite the losses, the Canada Games competition is not over for the Nova Scotia boxers. Uh, most times with boxing at any national tournament, it's uh, one loss and you're out of the tournament. So what they've done with Canada Games is uh, pretty unique. They have a double elimination uh, format so that uh, if you even if you lose your first belt, you go into uh, the bottom bracket and you know, all the people that lost their first votes get to go on and actually have to win a bronze instead of just be given a bronze by uh, not winning the, the, uh, the final. The boxing competition continues at the Canada Games Multisport Dome in Summerside through until the gold medal matches on March 4th. In Summerside, Prince Edward Island, I'm Jason Simmons for the Atlantic Sportswire. Let's check in once again with Saltwire weather specialist Alistair Alders. Alistair? Hi again, Scott. Well, I mentioned that we did have that low pressure system passing by today with a bit of snow. It wasn't significant. The larger system moves in later tomorrow into Friday, and that will bring more snow to the Halifax area. This evening, it will be mainly cloudy, and we will have a chance of flurries and the temperature near minus four and waking up near minus six on Thursday morning with mainly cloudy skies. Now, through the afternoon, it will become cloudy and we'll have periods of snow developing late afternoon into the evening hours with the temperature near 2 degrees for the high on Thursday. So initially, this will be a wet snow that could mix with a bit of rain or ice pellets, especially along the coast. But temperatures will be falling through Thursday evening into the overnight hours, and that means it will be mostly a snow event for uh, the rest of this uh, system. And I am expecting about 10 to 20 centimeters of snow in the Halifax area, but some pockets of 20 to 30 can't be ruled out, especially further inland. It's something I'm hoping to nail down over the next 24 hours and of course uh, we'll be providing updates here tomorrow but also online at saltwire.com slash weather. If you do have to travel late tomorrow night into early Friday, do take care on the roads. Scott. Thanks Alistair. That's all for now. For more extended video and full online articles, stay tuned to saltwire.com and you can also find us on Twitter, Instagram and YouTube. I'm Scott Squires. Thank you for spending some time with Saltwire today. We'll see you back here tomorrow.